So we've done something a little bit different. We've been shooting with our medium format cameras. It's not a direct comparison. We're just kind of having fun really, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. You have this camera and I have this one. The Pentax is a beast. I'm not going to deny it. It is very big. It's very heavy. <laughs> you struggled even to lift it with two fingers then. Uh, you don't carry that around unless you're definitely going to be taking pictures for the day. Although the Mamiya is, is not small, is it? It's not, but it's definitely much lighter. Yeah, like, I think that has a lot to do with the lens as well, though. The lens system is so compact. Mm. So they have 65 and 43 mil, which is literally about the same. The rear element is quite protruding, but you see this bit at the front. Yeah. So that's where the rear element sits. Right. The Mimi 6 that they had before would have a collapsible, collapsible bit. So you would, can push it in ah. for more compactness. Now, after shooting with that 9 this is light. Okay. Um, it's not FM3A light, but it is definitely probably the lightest medium format camera, unless obviously we talk holgers and stuff. This is a beast, however, with this you can shoot portraiture, you can shoot fashion. So it competes with cameras like Hasselblad 500 system, it competes with Mimea RZ67 or RB67 camera. So mm. it's not light, but because it's just a lot of time, what actually you see in the image you get. With me, it's a rangefinder style, so it's more of a Leica approach to the scene. Also, of course, it's focusing distance only 70 centimeters. Right. So it may not work for portraiture that much. No, sure. Right. So it's definitely not for fashion work. It's definitely not for portrait work, but I do have my RZ67 for that. This is really a travel camera for landscape type shots, architecture, and I would say environmental portraiture. Nice. See, my Mia 7 is basically shooting at f11 and anything faster than 1 20th of a second. That's all. You don't want to shoot anything else. F8, if you have to, F4, you get such a massive vignetting that for landscape, it's just not going to work. Wow. So, you really, your eye so is your film. Wow. That's I'm basically good. shooting everything, whatever the meter tells me, plus about two thirds of a stop. Just to be on the safe side? Yeah, just because of the clouds, because I, I, what I'm worried is it's going to meter for the sky and then, you know. That'll be it. Yeah, you're using the... I'm using my Sunny 16 rule. <laughs> it's actually, it needs to be about F11, not 16. And that's the end of that. And that's the end of the roll. Okay, so... Let's talk the most important thing, the prices, because the prices on both cameras went up quite significantly in the last couple of years. That's right. However, yours is reasonably affordable for 6x7 medium format. Yeah, so the um, Asahi Pentax, which is the first version, I actually have the first version of the camera which has no mirror up, which is a problem sometimes for obvious reasons, but it has the metered head on it. This one you can pick up with the standard, the, the 105, which is like the dream lens. Oh, it's beautiful. For uh, 1500 or under. Okay. 
the Pentax 672 Mark II does tend to go for a bit, bit over 2000. That's true. And what is your most used lens? Uh, to be honest, it's actually the wide angle or the 105, but I've kept the 105 on here for a few weeks now and I've found that it works for pretty much everything and it is, mm. it is absolutely beautiful to focus with. Fantastic. And then speaking of prices of this beast, you're looking at three grand plus. Mm. You're looking at maybe a couple of lenses. It could be anything between two and a half to four grand. I got lucky. I picked it up a couple of years ago with this lens, a 43 mil and 150 lens uh, for about, I think, under two under two and that's including the lenses Bargain. so still expensive yeah still expensive and especially if you would buy it five years ago you could buy it for about 500 pounds a body so i do want to get a backup but just it's out of the question <laughs> when at they go prices. back to 500 pounds <laughs> that's true that's true i would say 95 percent of all the time i use 80 mil f4 and it's just beautiful and Look at me. No. <laughs> Did you see how scared she was? All right, how much does it cost you each shot? With developing, if I also pay for scanning, which I usually do, it's about three quid a shot, isn't it? 14 quid a roll. Okay. So it's like 20 quid. So it's two pounds a shot. Okay. Two, two to 250, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And obviously, not every shot is going to be amazing. <laughs> That's. That's the photographer. That's like 15 quid a good picture. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna go for portrait 400 now. Look, Con's got the goods. Got the goods. Got portrait 400 here. So if someone wants to get into the medium format photography, it's actually nowadays is better way to shoot film because you can't buy 35 mil film anywhere right now. <laughs> it's out true. of stock. But if you want to get into medium format photography, what would you recommend on the budget and the ultimate setup? I would say, first of all, do your research. I did hours and hours, weeks, months of research before I decided on the Pentax and that that was the camera that I wanted to buy. Uh, it doesn't have to be expensive. If you are willing to adapt and learn, then you could go for a twin lens reflex, for example. Those tend to be cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's toy cameras that you can have a look at that also shoot medium format. Like Holger. Like the Holgers. These are obviously a bit more serious and a bit more heavy duty. I would say if you want a camera that's going to last you a really, really long time, do also check that you can get the camera you buy serviced somewhere. You can still get these serviced in certain locations, which is helpful. You got 10 shots only on this one, so you need to budget for that. That's right. But I do agree, you have a look at TLRs, my Mia C220 or something like this is not very expensive. Of K Rolay is a bit more expensive than that. You can go to small medium format like 645. For that, you've got Bronicus, which are not very expensive, then my Mi 645 or my Mi 1000, which were the earlier cameras like this. If you want a larger format, then you've got 6x6, obviously Hasselblads are very expensive. You also have my Mi 6, you have other systems you can choose from, they're a bit cheaper. And then for me, I definitely see the difference between a very large 6x7 negative over 35mm negative, especially when you scan. CoolScan 9000 can deliver about 110 megapixels wow. from a 6x7 scan. It allows you to get really good shots, really large negatives, lots of details. Now, what I would say to you, if you're into portrait photography, then Pentax is a better choice because it's a SLR style. This more range finding style, so for portrait is not as good, but I do have my Mamiya RZ67, so I do shoot portrait on that. Now, Pentax 67 has 105 2.4 lens, and this is supposed to be the one, the magical lens. You literally buy the camera just for this lens. So it is on my shopping list. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I will get there, and I'm also hoping to get a second one. Yes. But <laughs> probably only if I have a $5 deal somewhere in the thrift store, but realistically, it's unachievable right now. This is definitely more affordable. One at a time, doing one at a time, bit by bit.
Payment plans. <laughs> exactly. Installments. <laughs> okay. Remortgage let... your house. <laughs> Sell a kidney. <laughs> Sell all your digital stuff. <laughs> We know this wasn't a video about Nikon. We do wish that Nikon had made medium format cameras so we could review them, but we hope that you enjoyed it anyway. And if you did, please give us a like and a subscribe. It would be hugely appreciated. If you found this video useful as well, and it helped you with the choice of your medium format camera, then click that super thanks button as well. Absolutely.